everybody to the Rock Pile Report. Watch <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Sunday drive. <laughs> We have two. <laughs> Shut up. Um, but no, okay. Davis and Latula. I I like the idea of both of them coming in. Um, but I'll let you give me your take. Who do you want to start with first? Latula. Here's here's why. Ready? Heard a counter argument to the Bills bringing in Latula that he doesn't have the best pass rush numbers. Okay. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have that many tackles. Okay. He's a defensive tackle, man. Gotcha. His whole job is just to hug as many guys as he can. Yes. That's it. Like he's not there for pressure. I think. I th I think we he gauge. <laughs> I think we gauge defensive tackle production on pass rush, because Marcel Darius had a couple of years where he was generating pass rush from the DT position, and that just isn't always what that position is about. True. So I think the fan base has a tendency to gauge whether a player is good or not based off of their pass rush ability. And at the defensive tackle position, I just, that's not what it's about. Agree, disagree. Um, I'm going to do both because it depends what um, <clears throat> depends what defense you're, you're running. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have a 3-4, like this is why this is what this is what people don't I, I don't I don't think fully grasp. If you have a three four, your nose tackle or like a Haloti Nada, like mm -hmm. we talked about before, he's gotta be the guy that controls everything up front, two gap player and make plays. Mm -hmm. Because he's gotta because those those guards have free reign to the linebackers. He's right. gotta be able to at least take a guard mm -hmm. at once, you know. So the thing about him is those are the guys that get like the nine, ten million dollars a year because they're they're so productive. However, those guys don't have to always have the numbers either. Right. Because they're occupying so many people in the front um, that I think I just had a stroke. I can't remember what I was talking about. You're talking about 3 4 versus 4 3. Okay. So, <laughs> no, because they occupy so many people in the front that the guys around them are able to make the tackles, make plays, and do everything that they're supposed to do. Especially without blitzing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in a 4 3 front, first of all, the D tackles don't make as much. Plus, they're and then they're responsible for playing their gap. Now, the guy who ends up being the the workhorse in that is in the middle linebacker. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in a three four, the nose tackle is the is the horse. In a four three, the middle linebacker is the horse, who ends up getting all the money pretty much. In a McDermott defense, all you're uh, all you're responsible for is making the making the back bounce it. Mm -hmm. And generating consistent pressure up the middle of the field, mm -hmm. Latula serves both of those things at probably six million a year. So you're you're sold on Latula being? I love it. The I answer. said as soon as they traded Darius, I wanted Latula because you know, you know me. I'm huge on connections. Mm -hmm. McDermott got to Carolina in 2011. They drafted Latula 14th overall in 2013. So when he finally had himself established as the D coordinator there in Carolina, he's like, yeah, I need this guy. Not that, not so much do I need a defensive tackle. We need it our first pick. Mm -hmm. We need defensive tackle our first pick. Mm -hmm. So that's what he got. And, and he ended up being a heck of a player. Now, I think Latule is 28, 27? Uh, t probably 28. I, I'm not sure, but I, I, would, uh, I would assume 28. Last year was his fifth year option. <clears throat> He made like 6.7, I think. Right. I'll, I'll correct myself later, but um, I don't think he's going to cost very much because of the fact that what you the point you brought up that not many people, I mean, they're going to look at his numbers and be like, yeah, what his true yeah. value to McDermott is more than anybody's in the league. Right. Well, so your thought process because we're, and and the easy counter argument to make is that this is not Sean McDermott's defense; it's Leslie Frazier's defense. I understand that. Believe me, I understand that. But I don't think Matt Patricia was getting a guy unless Belichick approved it. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, 
So you think Latulale solves? I think he solves one of your solves, needs. Solves a problem because if they don't do that, they're drafting it. They're drafting yeah. defensive tackle. You yeah. and I are of the same mindset. They're going defense, defense. Yeah, first round. Yeah. Um, if, if, they they don't, if they don't trade the pick. Well, no, yeah, yeah, they don't trade it. I mean, a lot of people think we're crazy for that, but the amount of talent that's going to be pushed down the board because of the offensive talent, that, that's what's going to happen. But Latule, here's the other thing, and this is in terms that you'll understand and that you'll appreciate. Carolina Panthers are $28 million under the cap right now, mm-hmm. and they can't tag him. Nope. That's almost eat up half their cap. Yeah, if, if they, they tag him, he's going to be, what, nine? It, yeah, I was gonna, no, it's got to be more than that for a defensive tackle. It's got to be, it's got to be 10. But even so, I mean, we're splitting hairs 9 to 10. Yeah, so, yeah. but that's too much for them. Unless they could sign him to a long-term deal, which they have other needs. He is really their only big-name guy that's... Yeah. Other than Peppers, who's going to retire anyway. Right. Um, that's their big-name guy, but they're only $20 million under the cap. That's not counting their draft class. Oh, yeah, so they're going to spend another six and a half, I seven don't know. in draft. So the only thing that, that, that to me, because I'm completely sold that Latoulile is going to be a Buffalo Bill. The only problem is, can you front load it enough and still have room? Because if you front load it, Carolina's completely out. Yeah. They're completely done. Yeah. Well, it depends on what they do. I mean, they could put the transition tag on them. Yeah. You know, they, they could afford a transition the Charles tag. Charles Clay. Right. Thing. So they could let him go negotiate a contract with somebody else and then come back and see, can I match it? You know, like, but I don't know with that little amount of cap space, I don't know if they can really take that chance. No. Miami did it and it and, and the Bills were able to swipe Charles Clay from them, you know? Yeah, and they so did that. For, there's a risk there. Yeah, well, well I mean, they they had already signed Sue. That's why the Bills did that. Yeah. They couldn't afford yeah. it because of Sue. However, that being said, you know he fits. Yeah. You know there's a, there's a history there. Yep. Uh, you That's a need Big for time. you. Um, and I don't think it's going to, like I said, I don't think it's going to cost that much. I think it's going to be like seven a year, six, seven a year for like four years. You sign him to you sign him four years, thirty million, seventeen guaranteed. I mean, it it takes the pressure off of having to hit in the draft at that position. Absolutely, God. Yes. That's what good teams do is they remove the uh, they, they they remove the requirement to have to hit in the draft. If you if the Bills go this route, mm-hmm. let's say they sign Davis. Let's say they sign and Gaines. Let's say they do this. I'm just okay. spitballing right. here. Okay. They signed Latulale. Yeah. They signed Davis. They signed Gaines. Okay. Now that defensive talent that got pushed down to 21, 22, they don't need to burn those picks on those no. players. So what do those picks end up becoming? Best player available. Bundled oh. to move up. Okay. So as we were, we've been examining it this whole time, saying, "Hey, listen, if you get your quarterback, you get this, you get this, then yeah, you okay. can use those picks on defensive players." Well, how about if you end up getting those defensive players in free agency? Then those picks become collateral. Yeah, I see. I see what you're saying. To move up. I see what you're saying. Yeah, and that's and that's a definite possibility too. Um, with the way that the free agency rolls, you can fill needs. But yes. again, you have to look at how aggressive is Buffalo going to be signing name talent. They didn't do it this year, but no. again, they were they were a little strapped because they had to recycle the whole roster. Yeah. So they they were a little strapped this year and next year. Well, this year and and last year. Um, Next year obviously looks a little bit more open from a dollar standpoint, but you don't have a quarterback, right? You're missing a lot. You don't have a middle linebacker. Like you're you're missing a lot of players out of that equation. Which then you could use your second round picks on. I understand. I mean, I believe me, this is all speculation at this point. But we're just saying that. Okay, we were a nine and seven team. Our defense was ranked what twenty sixth. Yeah. We did this the X Y and Z. We may not just need role players. We may need to spend the two to four million that we were spending on certain guys that plug and play. Yeah. Maybe we need to spend five or six. You know. Yeah. So you could get like like a Leonard Johnson, who I loved when they signed Leonard Johnson because of the, of the McDermott connection. Yeah. Now that could be one of those things where you're talking about. You said this is Leslie Frazier's defense. This is not. McDermott's defense. Right. But McDermott obviously had some input in saying, listen, this guy's a great slot corner. Yeah, you got to give the Bills credit, man, because the guys that they signed really fit schematically. Yes. You know, so you, you, I I always get nervous around the offseason time because you're always worried that the team's going to make, you know, a couple bad signings. They've mm-hmm. shown I, I, I have no fear with, with what they want to do. Like, even when they went out and got Cadet, 
like just just went outside cadet and he for what they asked him to do really performed pretty well yes right there were some things that i didn't understand like tolbert being so heavily involved in the offense i didn't really understand his level of involvement so early in the season and through mid-season i didn't i didn't really get it um and then they had cadet and instantly tolbert wasn't as important in yeah. the offense so i mean it, it's the it's the signings that they make along in, inside the year as well so they got to leave themselves a little bit of room to do that but um you know overall you have to have faith in in their ability to recognize what players they need right it's not i think that's a, i think that's maybe a better way to phrase this it's not about what positions they need it's what players do they need right what tendencies are they looking for what type of player are, do they need like Gaines, they got it because he played zone really strong. Mm -hmm. Well, now Gaines is a free agent. I would love to go back and watch him play man-to-man -man coverage and see how exactly that went for him. Unfortunately, not a lot of tape of him this year. No. not no. There's just not there's not 16 games worth of film. So is he the $9 million player that SpotTrack mm. is putting out there right now? SpotTrack no. says he's $9.3 million. No. no, I don't think so. Because you still don't know how he performs against man coverage. When Spot Track does that, is it the value to the team he was just on because they no. need a corner desperately? No, no, it's it's market value and available Over, players. Okay, all right. So, like, I'll just give you an example. That number is going to shift once teams start cutting players, right? So, let's say Washington t cuts Josh Norman. Josh Norman's next contract is going to cut into EJ Gaines' contract, right? Okay, so yep. that nine point three number is probably going to shift down because Gaines won't be at the top of the class anymore. Yes. Right. So that Malcolm Butler. Right, I don't know where he figures in at this point. I assume he's top of the class as well. We but have another fight. Can we have another fight about Malcolm Butler? <laughs> See ya, dick! <laughs>